Howdy. Okay, y'all, we're gonna spend most of our time before the noon session. I'm, I'm probably, as I get through, you know, we're going through a lot of transition. Um, and I'm probably going to start doing Q&A at noon and, and using this 11 a.m. session as more of an educational session. Uh, but I will try as best I can to answer questions. There's just a lot of stuff I want to pack in here for our new members and our experienced, member, experienced members alike. So I hope you all bear with me as I continue to try to figure out uh, what the best way is to, to reach the most number of people that need our help, still offer amazing support with a very much tightened up budget. Um, so I hope you all bear with me. My inbox is flooded, and one of the things that concerns me about that the most is people feeling left out or feeling like I'm ignoring them or don't care. Not true. Please write this down. Everybody got pen and paper? Pen and paper, pen and paper, pencil and paper, digital notepad, whatever, it doesn't matter. My name's Travis Martin. I've lost over 100 pounds on the program. I've come off all prescription medications that I was on. Programs changed my life. It is a transformative lifestyle that is Christ-centered, not religious-centered, Christ-centered. When I say Christ to me, everybody has a different uh, view of their Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. When I say Christ, I mean love. I mean love. I, I, discovered, I discovered my Jesus on August the 21st, 2021. When I say Jesus, just so we're all on a level playing field here, whether you agree with this Jesus or not, when I say Jesus, I mean love. That includes love of you and self-love. Love, no judgment, no regret, no shame, no guilt. Still human, but I'm gonna do my best to imitate Christ. I am the implied image of Jesus Christ and so are you. I'm not the express image of God. Jesus Christ is the express image of God. We're just an implied image doing the best we can. We should show each other a lot of love, a lot of forgiveness. That does relate to weight loss and wellness. So depending on what's been going on with you, I hope you'll let go of perceptive past failings. Okay, let it go. Let's have a good time in the Lord. Let's learn how to eat right. I do want to give you a, a little monologue before we get started here, okay? Just something to think about that come from my study, Sasha's study uh, earlier this morning. Let me share this with you. I always think I got this stuff pulled up to discover I don't. Let's see. Where'd it go? Here it is. Okay, here it is. Everybody ready? Oh, pen and paper. Did y'all get pen and paper? Nobody said anything since Melissa. Does that mean the, the internet's frozen? Can y'all still hear me? Everybody still got me? I'm a little all over the place. After I have my happy juice, I get all flustered. Okay, write this down. Please email your questions to info at myshaboleth.com. Info at myshaboleth.com. That's not to say that I don't want to hear from you. I do. But a lot of folks are feeling left out. And what happens is I've got so many responsibilities, these classes being uh, a big part of that, that I'm unable to do what my heart wants to do, which is answer the hundreds of emails I'm getting a day. So please, if, if you, I will eventually, hopefully get to it, especially if you resend a few times. But if, if I'm not answering it, because again, we have tightened up the budget and we're actually trying to help more people. It's uh, been a crazy time and we're, we're happy. It's, God is using this time to transform my wife, me, our members. Uh, but because of that, because of that tightened budget, I'm not having the same amount of time I used to to get back with everybody, especially when most of the questions coming to me require several paragraphs of, of thorough explanation. Please, if you need help, please reach out to info at myshaboleth.com. I promise you what they're not willing to, what they're not uh, able to address, they will get to me. Um, but those things that they're able to address they'll be, be able to address it and keep you moving forward on your wellness journey. I really appreciate that. We've got some big things coming for our free community members, uh, for our lifetime members, and for our partners. We're just weeks away from relaunching our website, and we think it's going to be a big hit with our lifetime members and partners. And it's our way of saying thank you 
Thank you. We have listened to you. We're, we're making the program better for our members to help them personalize their journey better with Shibboleth. But it all starts with what we call a free community program. When we say free, you should not, you should not devalue our program. This is the most robust, amazing program that I know about. And it's not, I'm not saying that because I'm involved with it. I've done all the diets and we've put together, certainly it's not, uh, we, we don't have the money to make it look as beautiful as some of those multi-million dollar companies. But when it comes to what the efficacy of what we teach and the amazing support that we offer and for the price we offer that, Everybody can get the help they need, leave dieting behind, and live a practical, sustainable, fun lifestyle forevermore. You just got to come, connect, be a part of things, immerse yourself in this new lifestyle of yours, and you'll thank, you'll thank Shibola for it later. It'll change your life. So Kim O is saying, remind them to use the Facebook groups that they are a part of. Free members have Shibola lifestyle group and members. Yeah, you can always connect with us on Facebook. Now, again, if you're tagging me, sometimes the team thinks that, that I need to respond to that. But it, I'm going to ask my team as they see me tag to please answer questions that you know how to answer. And if it looks like something's going unanswered, get me. Because we want to make sure, eh, you know, a lot of the stuff that I want to accomplish, people tell me it's impossible. That there's no way to help millions of people with weight loss and wellness. There's no way to support millions of people with weight loss and wellness without charging a, a pretty pretty hefty price to, to do these things. I disagree. These things are impossible with man. It's why our program's devalued. I had somebody just over the weekend say, there's no way there's got to be a catch. There's no catch. We love people. God has called us to do this, and we want to do our best with it. And where what we're trying to do is impossible with man, is possible with God. So we hope that people will hear the message, the Spirit will speak to people's heart, and you'll come go with us. We've got a, a lot of work to do. If you look around in our populace, forget overweight. I want you to just look at the number of depressed people. Hey, Kim Danke, Kim's with us, Julie's with us. So you look around, do you ever see depressed people? They're so depressed. And depression is just looking out into the future and not being able to see yourself happy in that future. We can change that beginning today. And I'm going to tell you some things here on the front end before we get into meal ideas that you may not want to hear, but it's the truth. I want you to watch this. I'm going to read a little scripture to you, and then we'll get right to meal ideas. This is over in the book of Luke. This is Luke chapter 22. Let me get to the goody here. Bear with me. I may have to go off of uh, my memory instead of reading. I had this all set up and I lost it. I can't get it to pull back up. Well, shoot. Ah, here it is. Here it is. So this is where Peter, verse 33, Peter says, and he said unto Lord, Unto the Lord Jesus, I am ready to go with thee, both into prison and unto death. Now, bear with me here. I want you to listen to this. Peter's telling the Lord, look, I'm not going to let you be apprehended. I'm going to go with you. I will fight. So Peter is highly motivated. Peter's motivated right now, y'all. Let me ask you this. Now, our life today is not in jeopardy this moment. Everybody here that's in this class I know you're worried about what's going on across the planet. I'm not talking about that. But where you are right now, your life is not in jeopardy. You're here with me. I'm here with you. We've got a pretty good life. Amen. If we get our eyes off all, all the stuff that, that, that we don't want and put our eyes on the blessings that are all around us, we've all got a pretty good life. Now, Peter here is motivated. How many of you have ever come to class? Please stay with me. This is good. How many of you have ever come to class and you've left more motivated than when you came? And then in your heart and in your mind, you said, I'm going to do it. It doesn't have to be my class. It could have been Julie's class. It could have been Kim's class. 
It could have been Weight Watchers. But you've left and you said, I declare it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do this. I can do it. And then something happened. Life got in the way later in the day or life got in the way that week. And you were doing good, but all of a sudden you just you ha- you threw up your hand, you threw your hands in there and said, "Just I forget it, I can't do it." Has that happened to anybody? You went from motivation to just press down and and not feeling it at all, and therefore you made the wrong choices. Got in the fridge, couldn't get out. Got in the pantry, couldn't get out. Has that happened to anybody beside me ever? This is why I say when we talk the bulletproof shield, you've got to have a, a strong why if you're going to be successful. But I want to throw this at you. You're going to have to have something even besides a why if you're going to be successful. I have found this out. You're going to have to have more than wanting to look good naked. How many of you want to look good naked? Raise your hand. If you'll lie about that, you'll lie about other things too, right? You've got, you've got to have more than want to look good naked. And you've got to have more than just wanting to get off prescription medications. And you've got to want to have more than to look pretty in a pretty dress, look good in a pretty dress. There's a lot more to it. Those things, no matter how big your why is, sometimes that's going to let you down because of your flesh. So I want to read this with you. Peter's motivated. He's motivated. And he's telling the Lord that, I I will not, I will not turn my back on you, Lord. I'm motivated. I will fight with you to the end. There's a lot to unpack here that we're not going to unpack. I just want to give you a thought. He was determined. But does anybody recall from the scriptures what happened when they came and apprehended, when they came and apprehended Jesus? Do y'all remember what happened? Peter, Peter fought when they come to a, Jesus told Peter, Peter, you're motivated right now, but I'm telling you, you're going to deny me how many times? Three times before the cock crows twice. Y'all remember that reading? You probably remember that from uh, uh, Bible Bible school growing up. You're going to deny me, Peter. And Peter says, I'm not going to deny you. You will deny me three times before the cock crows twice. Now, Peter's life was in jeopardy. Now, I'm not trying to get on you too hard. I just want you to get this. Peter wasn't a coward. Peter cut, Peter, when they tried to arrest Jesus, Peter cut Malchus's ear off. And Jesus scolded Peter. Peter was ready to fight, but he was going about it the wrong way. How many of you have ever went about weight loss the wrong way? You tried to quick fix. You tried to do it some weird way to take a shortcut. It never works out, does it? Peter did it the wrong way. And Jesus stopped. First of all, Jesus being our precious Jesus, not willing to hurt anyone, he just reached down and picked Malchus's ear up and put it back on Malchus. Somebody ought to shout about that. He fixed it. The damage that Peter done, Jesus fixed it. You know, the damage that we've done, Jesus can fix it. Even the damage we've done to our own temples. So he put, and he said, Peter, if you live by the sword, you're going to die by the sword. I have got news for y'all today. If you keep living your way and you keep trying to do things your ways and you, you keep trying to take shortcuts and you don't start living under Jesus, eating breaks for the Father, lunch for the Son, and dinner for the Holy Spirit, Realizing even eating and committing that part of your life to him is an act of worship and adoration of our Savior. We're not our own. We've been bought with a price. Think about that. Live and eat unto the Lord and watch the Lord bless you. And Jesus said, if you live by the sword, Peter, you'll die by the sword. In other other words, there's a new spirit that's come, Peter. We don't fight our battles that way. You are not going to be able to fight your battles as it relates to food addiction and obesity the way you fought them in the past. There's a new day here, and it's called the day of the Holy Spirit. You've got so much power living inside of you that you're not letting go. It's the power of the Holy Ghost, the fruit of the Spirit, one of the most poignant ones 
is self-control. Suzette says, if we live by food, we'll die by food. Lord, have mercy, Suzette. Preach it. Man can't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. When we get up and we do this, we commit even our, it doesn't matter what I want to eat. I'm going to eat under the Lord. I'm going to glorify God even in my body. I'm going to clean my temple up. The next six months of my life are going to be transformative. And I'm going to do what I've never done before. I'm going to take something that most people use as a stress elixir, a boredom elixir. And you know what? I'm going to eat unto the Lord and I'm going to follow a system. It don't have to be Shibboleth. As long as you're uh, in a calorie deficit and controlling insulin, that's all you need. And, and I hope you'll come go with us, but I don't want to be that way. I don't want anybody to make Shibboleth. God, God is God. And beside God, there's no other. And Peter just didn't know how to fight the battle. And then when he didn't know what to do and it was time for him to stand up for the Lord, he wasn't about to get ready. Get ready. He wasn't about to surrender. How did Jesus win the battle? The battle of all battles. He didn't win a battle. He won the war. How did he win? Did he fight or did he surrender? He surrendered. He surrendered. If you surrender your eating behaviors to the Lord. Now, when you leave this class and you're motivated, how do you know if you got it or not? Motivation's not going to work. It's inspiration. Did, did this message get on the inside of you today? Are you really ready to commit those eating? Quit grazing. Stop grazing and eat breakfast for the Father, lunch for the Son, dinner for the Holy Spirit. Combine right, control that insulin. How many of us, our life is not even in jeopardy, and we will sell out on the Lord over a chimichanga? We will sell out on the Lord over those little cheddar goldfish. Has anybody ever done that? Have, have you ever been doing good and you did like Esau and you gave up your birthright and your blessing for some cheddar goldfish? Why? Why would we sell out on the Lord so easy? He's shown us the way. is surrender. Surrender your eating habits unto the Lord today. Now, let's get right into some meal ideas. Was that good, y'all? Will y'all take that with you? Hey, Sandra. Hey, everybody. Hey, those of you just coming in. I can't wait to read some of this stuff later. It's, it's a lot of good stuff I see. Are y'all ready? Let's do this. Let me share the food library with you as a recap, okay? So uh, now we've got, if you're in the 30-day lifestyle makeover, this is our free community program. Of course, if you're an experienced member, you have access to all that other stuff and you can move around in there freely, uh, even for this class. But those of you that are in the, the free community program, we'll just take the basic information without doing too much of a deep dive to come up with some meal ideas. Now, let me stop this. Write this down. Write this down. We're going to do some reverse engineering. Uh, we're going to put together some meal ideas that control insulin today. And if you control your portion, you're going to end every day in a calorie deficit and controlling insulin and losing body fat like taking a blowtorch to blubber. <laughs> All right. So, but we're going to do this because we may leave out some important things if we don't start, we don't, we don't begin with the end in mind. So when we put these meals together, when we say fish and broccoli, okay, there's some other things we need to discuss there. Number one, how we prepare it. How we prepare it, what did we cook into it? Did we bread it? What kind of breading did we use? Did we fry it? What kind of fat did we use, et cetera? That's very important. We're gonna come up with quick rapid fire meal ideas today but we may not get around to how to prepare it and cook it. So just, just as a recap, you new folks watch these experienced members. If I bread my fish with cornmeal, so fish is a category one lean protein. We'll go to the categories in a minute. Fish is a very good category one lean protein. It's exercise on a plate, but that's in its natural state. So if I take that fish, all fish is lean protein. 
delicious, amazing, great for the body, great for the metabolism. Fish. If I bred it in cornmeal, is it still a category one? No. Now, Brother Charles said it's category four. It's not. What is still on the program, if it's breaded in cornmeal or flour, it's one of our holidays, isn't it? Okay. Now, there's ways to bread our fish. We can bread it in carb quick, uh, TVP. There's ways to bread it. Okay. But I want to make sure before we leave, because I talked to a member over the weekend, they thought Long John Silver uh, fried fish was category one. Do y'all see why I need to go over this? Those of you that been around a while. You said all fish. Bless their heart. I took, I took the, I said, it's, that's my fault. I do. I say all fish, but I didn't mean breaded fish. So I want to be clear today. If it's going to stay in, a, in the right category, it's, we got to use the right stuff. Let, let, me, let me see how advanced y'all are. This is a deeper dive. I said I wouldn't do this, but let me do it with my experienced members. What if I take cod? What if I take cod and I dip cod in my egg white wash and then I batter it in carb quick? What does it become then? Is it still a one? Very good, Melissa. Awesome. It's a one plus two then, right? Now, I could make the case it's a four, but I've always decided I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep it because there's a lot of fat in carb quick. But the good thing is there's no blood sugar rise from the carb quick, and it's also full of fiber. So we chose a long time ago to put it uh, in, in a one plus two category when it comes to using it as a breading. Next question. If I take that fish and I dip it in egg white wash and I batter it for a more crunchy texture, I batter it in TVP. What is that? Suzette, it is. That is enough category two. If I batter it in TVP, it's a one and two also. So you've got these great breadings that you can use on squash and on okra and on fish, and you've got your one plus two right there. Great job. Okay. Now, if I cook my cod, if I take cod and I cook it in olive oil or vegetable oil, what happens to it? Very good. It becomes a category four. That, that tells us, okay, it's a category four now. I can have it, but there's things I won't be able to have with it. Where if it remains a one and two, I'll still be able to have a complex carb like a potato or fruit for dessert. Y'all with me so far? Any questions about that? Very important that you prepare your food right. Now, if I'm in the weight loss phase and I go to, um, let me give, give you a good one. I go to Applebee's and I tell them I only want grilled salmon and broccoli. What category is the salmon and broccoli? Very good. Four and two, because I don't know how they prepared it. Are y'all, does that make sense? If I, I only count meats, I only count meats as a category one in my home because I can cook with what oil, everybody? This is beautiful stuff. If I could get everybody to understand that this boy from you, Harley, we crack the code in the name of Jesus. This is so easy. Everybody can do this. Okay. MCT. Great job, Tammy. If we, at home, if we cook in MCT, what are the other three oils that we can cook with at home and it doesn't alter the category? There's three more. Coconut, ghee butter. One more. Hip oil. Yeah, who was that? Who got that? Janice. Oh, Janice, you superstar. Way to go. Now, avocado oil is a good oil. It's better for you than some of the others we've already mentioned. But avocado would make it a category four. Okay? Everybody good. Any questions about how we prepare stuff? And Now, again, well, I love to eat out, Brother Travis. I, 
you you just made you just took this whole program away from me because I love to eat out and sometimes I want a potato when I eat out and yada yada. How many holidays do you get a month? Don't let the devil in. Would y'all just tell that rascal to get behind you in the name of Jesus? He he dupes you and fools you. He gets you focusing on what you can't have instead of what you can have. It you get six holidays a month to eat what you want until you get your health back. And then when you get your health back, you get almost half the month. Oh, glory to God. How amazing. <laughs> get your mind right. Eat unto the Lord. This is so easy. I mean, Peter, at least his life was in jeopardy. You and I will betray the Lord over a bowl of popcorn. Come on. Let's do it. Let's press into it. All right. Awesome. Next, so I've got my meal. I know how it, I, I know what uh what it's been cooked in. If I don't know what it's been cooked in, I treat it like a category four for safety, or I have a holiday. I can also flavor my meals with condiments. What's the condiment rule where I can put this on any properly portioned combined food? What is the most liberal interpretation of our condiment rule? That's right, 50 calories or less of anything. Can I put 50 calories or less of anything in a cup of coffee? No. Why? Why can I use 50 calories or less of anything on a whole food combination, but not in a cup of coffee? Right, Melissa, you're nailing it again. Because a cup of coffee is pre-digested. There's not a lot of digestion going on there. So if I put 50 calories of sugar in that coffee, real sugar, I'm going to jack my blood sugar up. It's like taking a syringe full of sugar and dumping it in our bloodstream. But if I have fish and broccoli, even if I put something I shouldn't really be putting on it, if it's only 50 calories or less now, it's mingled. It leavened, leavens the whole lump, right? So now it's mingled with something that's whole food. And as we consume it, that slows down the blood sugar rise. And when we slow down the blood sugar rise, we deal with less insulin. Does that make sense, everybody? Any light bulb moments right now? Okay. Now, do we want you using the 50 calorie condiment rule? Not really. That, that's just adding additional calories that you don't need to. We'd prefer you use zero calorie condiments or the five, two, and few rule. That's in one of the fast track videos. Five grams of sugar less, two grams of fat or less, and use just a smidge. I prefer zero calorie condiments. Uh, Walden Farms calorie free condiments, herbs, spices, seasonings. Sasha and I have made like a, a day a month out of going to the spice shop and buying all kind of neat, cool spices, bacon spices, all kind of stuff that helps flavor our food. Are y'all with me? Suzette asked, if I use 16 ounces of coffee, can I use 30 cal of carnation creamer? No, please don't. So the only thing we want to add to a cup of coffee is how many, how many uh, calories? What's the max? 15 or less. Okay, 15 or less. Uh, you don't have to use any. You could use Amica Sweet, Amica Stevia. Amica has, a, I love to take a, a cup of Four Sigmatic coffee, and Amica has a, butter, a butterscotch flavor, and I love to put that butterscotch flavor in that coffee. It's so good. Now I'm not using any calories, and it sweetens it very well. If you get creative, you'll find ways to cut calories. This is called, I mean, you're, you're doing what they call biohacking. You're getting to your goal quicker because you got smart. Isn't proper serving of plain baked potato with zero calorie seasoning ghee acceptable with properly prepared chicken? Uh, well, Greta, you could, you could do that with 96% lean ground meat. So you could have a example. We'll use this as a meal idea if you'll remind me in a minute. So you can have a plain baked potato, a medium sized potato, with seasoning on it, a little fat-free sour cream, and just a touch of ghee. Remember, this much ghee is 100 calories, so we can only have half our thumb worth of butter. Are y'all with me? Zero-calorie butter spray or half of our thumb, just my thumb knuckle up of butter. 
on that potato. Any more than that is going to be too much. So we, we've got our medium-sized potato. you got some grilled chicken breast that wasn't any other fat or oil cooked into it. And then you've got your, your side salad. That would be a beautiful combination. One of the things I do is get a large baked potato, but I only eat half of it, and I stuff it with lean ground beef, fat-free cheese, and salsa. And you can do stuff like that and, and do well with a little side category two veggie even. Does that make sense, Greta? Kathleen, what is we are eating breakfast with our coffee? Coffee's a freebie, so that doesn't matter. Bio coffee's not a freebie. That really shouldn't even be called coffee, but they do. I like bio coffee. I use it. It has its advantages, but it's not a freebie. A cup of coffee prepared the right way is just a freebie. So it's not an eating episode. Zero calories is not an eating episode. Y'all with me? So you're having your approved breakfast and a cup of coffee, beautiful. Maybe that looks like an egg white omelet with a cup of coffee. Maybe that looks like Advanced Health Systems pancakes with a little zero calorie butter spray and some sugar-free uh, syrup or some uh, sugar-free Aunt Jemima syrup. And I'm having my pancakes and coffee. Nothing wrong with that. Suzette, so that is cheating if you prepare 16 ounces, but if I drink two cups, it's okay. I didn't say it was cheating. I'm just giving you rules, right? So can we all, Kim, Kim Overmeyer, this is her favorite kind of thing. This is like when she's going to tell me, see, 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 see what they do. That was a good one, Suzette. I'm not saying you're cheating. I'm saying in a cup of coffee. Now, if you're going to drink two coffees back to back, I see what you're saying. You're getting your 30 calories anyway. If you want to do that personally, go ahead. You, you can... You can modify Shibboleth, and if it stops working for you, then you'll know, just take good notes and journal. So once you start trying to branch out and do your own thing with it, then, because listen, there's always going to be a way to figure out how to fit more in, right? And it's not to say it's wrong. Maybe it's just something I hadn't thought about because I don't have two cups of coffee. But when you're putting 30 calories in a pre-digested cup of coffee at one time, if those th – I don't know what the calories are. What if they're sugar? So if I have a rule and it's 30 calories, but you're using something that's not 30 calories of sugar, but somebody else is using 30 calories of sugar at one time, yeah, that could cause a potential blood sugar spike and too much insulin. But no, you're not cheating. You're trying to develop your own version of Shibola. My job is to give you the foundation. Now, when you start branching out off that, Make good notes, journal. If y'all aren't journaling when things go wrong, you're not going to be able to look back and figure out what went wrong. I can figure out what went wrong because I journal everything. But that's totally up to you, Suzette. It's just not going to be a rule that I use here without really thinking it through. That's more like if I was in a one-on-one -on -one situation with you and wasn't talking to people who will do all kinds of things with their 30 calories, and you said, no, I'm only doing it this way. I would go, oh, that's good. That's good for you. You make that your program. But I have to exist with tens of thousands of people with rules. So I got to give you the rule. And the rule is in a pre-digested cup of coffee, 15 calories or less of anything. All right? Don't try to put more stuff in anything than you need just because you can. It's kind of like lawful, but maybe it's not expedient. Kim says, and sometimes what works for one might not work for another. Right. So we give rules that are safe for everybody. Okay. Bio coffee is what category? Where's the first place we can figure out what category bio coffee is, everybody? Just to make sure we're on the same page, because I'm not always here live with you. Where do we go to figure out what bio coffee is on the program? Amen. Resources and food library. Now that you know that, a bio coffee, one serving of bio coffee can be used as a half a snack. It can be used for our blood, uh, our uh, diabetic clients as a way to get their blood sugar up as an extra. Two bio coffees would be one full snack. It has tapioca starch in it, so we don't want to do more than that. Or you can take it and make a meal episode out of it by having bio coffee with a high protein uh, drink mix, like Coco Ringa 
or health-wise hot chocolate, okay? So those are the ways to use bio coffee and stay out of trouble and get the benefits of it. Charmaine, is protein powder still acceptable with coffee from Thrive Days? That old Thrive thing, it's still out there, huh? So is protein powder still acceptable? Yes, yes. You can use a little bit of protein powder in your coffee as a creamer. Amica, uh, Tammy Davis on Facebook. It's not Amica, it's O-M-I-C-A, Amica. Uh, Omica, I think is the way they pronounce it. Omica, maybe, but they have flavored stevias. They're really good, okay? So let's get into the, the food combination. They're going to kill me if I don't come up with food combinations today. I got some emails about that. Would you please quit talking through the whole class and give us some meal ideas? Okay, I'll do that. All right, so let me pull this up. Hold on. I ain't answering no more questions till noon. All right. I don't think. I might. You know how I am. Okay, first off, we've got our basic combinations, basic food combinations, and we've got advanced food combinations, just more combinations. We're going to be looking at our basic combinations. Okay, this, this is on the website. You've got your red column, your yellow column, and your blue column. Red column is best for fat loss, rapid fat loss that's safe. Yellow is slightly less rapid, but still great. And then the blue column is still, still sustainable fat loss until you get down to that last 10 or 15 pounds. Your blue column is where you should spend most of your life, especially when we're talking about the advanced column. Why do I say that's where you should spend most of your life? Because you should get to the weight loss goal very quick. If you're serious about living and eating unto Jesus, this isn't going to take much time. A few months, it's over, okay? You're there. You're in your wellness range. You will gain all of your weight back unless you make this a lifestyle. So your blue column is where you're going to spend most of the rest of your life because it is, uh, offers amazing variety so that we can have our potatoes, we can have our tomatoes, we can have our long grain brown rice. We can have bananas. There's so much there in that blue column. That's what I call the lifestyle column. I spent up front, I spent a lot of time in red and yellow. I still spend a lot of time there, but during the week I spent a lot of time in the blue too, okay? I like my variety, especially at home. If I'm at a restaurant, I tend to stay with red column at a restaurant. Again, ding, ding, ding. To reconnect dots, why do I spend most of my time in red column at restaurants? Unless it's, I've earned a holiday because we don't know what they're cooking in. We don't know what they're cooking those foods in, okay? So going back to our basic combinations. In the basic combinations there, do you see a combination that you struggle with and that you would like to come up with some meal ideas for? You get to pick it. This stuff is so easy. And then once we commit it to memory, we don't even need the food combination chart. Anybody see a combination that you want to look at? We must have a bit of a delay. Seven plus two plus MCT. So let's do that one first. Seven plus two plus MCT. All right. So I'm going over to meal ideas. Category seven. What is category seven, everyone? I'm on, I think we got a delay, so I'll probably ask and then answer for you. 
Seven, and then what is cat category two, everybody? Fibrous carbs and MCT oil, okay? So that's what we're coming up with. That's traditionally, we don't eat a lot of shellfish for breakfast. We could, it doesn't matter, but we don't do that. So let's take a look at lunch. Could I do the following? If I went to Captain D's and I got shrimp, grilled shrimp or shrimp scampi, I think it's grilled shrimp. I haven't been there in forever. If I got grilled shrimp and green beans, would that be a seven plus two? No. Why would it not be a seven plus two? Good job, Kim. That's why, hey, y'all, did y'all see that? That's why Kim guards the library. Kim is the one that guards the library because she knows. Very good, everyone. It's a category four because it was at a restaurant. That was a trick question. So now I'm at home in this scenario. And uh, let's just say I did this the other night. I even posted on Facebook. Sasha did this. So we had shrimp. We boiled shrimp. and dipped in ghee. Now, again, we'd rather have MCT oil, but we can have those other oils in place of MCT. Ghee, coconut oil, and hemp oil. So we had bullshit, uh, shrimp, sorry. <laughs> Did I just say a word he dirt by accident? It was unintentional. Boiled shrimp, dipped in hot ghee butter with a little lemon juice, yeah, try saying condiment really fast a bunch of times. So boiled shrimp, dipped in ghee, and I put salt. I put a lot of salt in my ghee, a little lemon juice, and then I had squ boiled squash, salt, and pepper. That was a beautiful seven plus two plus the proper fat. I would class that as a seven plus two plus MCT. Okay, let's do another one. Uh, shellfish. So I do this a lot at home and it's usually me that makes it. So I've got crab, shrimp, broccoli, boiled in Old Bay seasoning, with no MCT. Oops. That's a seven plus two without the MCT. Now, if I dip it in butter, that's my, that's my MCT. And I'm always going to dip that in butter. Dipped in ghee. Okay. Let's take a, a look at one that we had the, the, uh, a couple of weeks ago. They was running a special on one-pound Maine lobsters. You could get a Maine lobster and ribs for 19 bucks. So we went and got a one-pound Maine lobster with ribs, sauce on the side. This is a good one here, y'all. I'm gonna go in and put this in for dinner. So we had lobster. You don't eat the shell, so it didn't have to follow the portion rule because when we shut the meat, a, a one so that you know, a one pound lobster is a small lobster. So we shut the meat and it only fits like half the plate. There's not a lot of meat in there. And then they brought some ribs out which fit on our plate, and we had some broccoli with it. So I had lobster, ribs, and broccoli. I didn't eat any of the bread that they brought out, and nor did Sasha. Lobster, ribs, and broccoli, what combination would that be? Yeah, it's a 742. The four always trumps your one and seven. So you could say a seven, four, two, and I would know what you meant, but technically it's a four and two. Here's why. The Bible says when, if there's a little leaven, a little leaven, leaven, leaven up the whole lump. So if I add a little, two, if, I, if I add another fat to that lobster, it can't be a seven anymore. And meat with added fat always fits best as a category four. Does that make sense? Now, Melissa says, could this be a holiday? 
only if I overeat the portion or eat the bread. Like, watch, watch this, everybody. If we, we don't allow them to bring the bread most of the time unless they sneak it in, but they, they offered bread. What if that bread sit there and I, I had my lobster, ribs, and broccoli on a portion plate, but I ate a slice of bread? What kind of day is that? It's a holiday. What if, though, what if I, you know how that it looks so delicious with the little chives on there and, and the garlic, garlic bread and the butter? What if I just took a little, just a little nibble off of it? What kind of day would that be? It's a holiday. If you so much as lick the cheese dust off a of Dorito. Now, let me stop this a minute and let me see, let me see if I can explain. There's some things, listen, there's some things that people will say, well, that's not right, Travis. If you just lick a little bit of that bread and just get just the crust off of it a little bit, that is not going to spike blood sugar. I once I was teaching a large group many years ago when I was a part of this company called Thrive. So I'm a part of this company, my company, but but I, I'm in a big group and a dietitian said, if you lick the cheese dust off a of Dorito, that's not a holiday. That will not spike your blood sugar. Just licking a Dorito. You didn't even, you just eat the spice on the Dorito. And I said, I get what you're saying, but all these people in here, they be my people. Watch this, ma'am. These be my people. How many of you can stop with a lick? If you so much as lick it, if you lick it, after the lick goes the crunch, after the crunch goes the bag. Don't even do it. You're losing your wits about you. You have to be, you have to discipline your flesh. Okay? So don't even start playing with fire. If, I, if Travis Martin even mentally starts playing with fire, even if I did nothing wrong, I call it a holiday. I am not going to nibble it, lick it, I've seen one person get away with that and be successful, and it was my sweet stepdaughter. She was doing great on the program, and we went to Red Lobster, and she said, I've got to have a Cheddar Bay Biscuit, but I don't want to have a holiday. And I said, well, it's a holiday if you have a Cheddar Bay Biscuit. And she said, what if I just put it in my mouth and chew it up, and I don't swallow it and I spit it out? I said, well, I guess technically you could do that. And she pulled it off. She ate like six Cheddar Bay biscuits and sitting there with her napkin spitting them out. I mean, that you got to really want a Cheddar Bay biscuit. But to me, that's not satisfying. But God bless her. She's the only one i ever seen able to do that. But anyway, that's Sasha's daughter, by the way. She's a hoot. Are y'all with me, though? Are we doing a good job today? Is anybody learning anything? Are you happy? I hope y'all share Shabbos with somebody. I hope you'll become a partner. Too. We really need it. All right. So let's keep going. So uh, Charles Grant said he wanted to do a one, two, and three. Let's do a one, two, three. Can anybody that's experienced here give me a meal idea with a one, two, three? Anybody? Sorry, my eyes are itching. I got beat up this morning at jujitsu. <laughs> my face feel like it got exfoliated. Okay, Suzette says she she brings out the status quo right out of the gate. Chicken breast, green beans, and potato. Now, can I do chicken thighs, green beans, and potato, everyone? No, that would be a category four, and we can't have a four and a three together according to our combinations. So how do I have to cook my chicken, green beans, and potato? With all the spice and seasonings I want, I would grill my chicken breast. Uh, but all the spices and seasonings that I want. And if I use any kind of fat, MCT, coconut oil, ghee, or hemp oil, okay? I can use condiments. I can still use fat-free sour cream, even a little fat-free cheese on that potato. There's a lot I can do. And by the way, just another tip for uh, vegetables. I love, uh, oh, now it's escaping me. Goya. Goya salad seasoning. I love that even on like green beans. It's really good.
but you can flavor them. Just don't add any incorrect fat to it. You would not be able to have chicken, green beans, and potato at a restaurant unless you're certain they're dry grilling it without any fat, and they're probably not going to do that, okay? So this meal would look like, for me, grilled chicken, grilled chicken, green beans, all this seasoned properly, properly, and a medium potato, medium potato with fat-free uh, sour cream. I like that. And I might sprinkle some hemp flakes on there just as a garnish. Okay, make it look like some chives are on it there. That would be pretty. I like that. I like the sounds of that. So I could do that. That would be a good thing to do. Could I put on my grilled chicken, could I put an approved barbecue sauce and still have my potato? You could bake it or grill it. It wouldn't matter as long as you didn't cook any fat into it. Yep, you could do that. Good stuff, right? So I could put barbecue sauce on it. Uh, a lot of stuff. I could air fry it. I could bake it. I could broil it. I could however I need to do it to get it done. If I cook an incorrect fat into it, it becomes a four. So chicken thighs traditionally have a little more fat in them. Not so bad that if you accidentally called it a one, it would be a big deal. Uh, example, chicken wings. Chicken wings are another approved, but they're a category four. I could not have chicken wings with a, uh, with a potato. Does everybody see that? Now, somebody's asking about where to find fat-free stuff. Just another disclaimer. I'm not big on fat-free anything, but a, a slice of fat-free cheese, even though it's fat-free, does such negligible harm. It's so much better than you having full-fat cheese on a potato. Is there ever a time I can have full-fat cheese? If so, what type of day would that be? If I had full-fat, the good kind of cheese, if I had it, what kind of day could I have it? You could have it on a holiday, but you could also, if you understand it in the advanced sessions, you could have a lion or a shark day, and then you could have full fat cheese if you follow those protocols. That's where I spend a lot of my time now is lion and shark days. Okay. But I don't want, I do not want to use, let me, let me throw this at you. Grilled chicken, green beans, and a medium potato, and I want cheese on my potato. Could I use full fat cheese? Well, it wouldn't be a tiger day because a tiger day would not allow for me to have a potato. Well, no, I take that back. You're, you're right. You're right. I messed that up. I'd have to go look at the cheese list. I was thinking a lion day. So, but here, here was going to be my point. You can can have a condiment but cheese full fat cheese is like butter so from my thumb knuckle up my thumb knuckle up would be all the cheese I could have and I don't know that's worth it does that make sense fifty calories of anything used as a condiment is not going to kill you if it's on a whole food meal okay all right, so let me stop here because I'm about to go to the next class. Let me save this, and we'll keep using this as our worksheet tomorrow. Did anybody learn anything that might be of help to them today? Even if you didn't learn anything, are you going to leave more motivated? Did everybody get something? Y'all know me. When you quit getting stuff, I'll go do something else. I won't waste your time or mine. So I want to make sure it's helping. Because I really try to pretend I'm a new person again. And that's hard for me to do sometimes. I've been doing this for 20 years. So if I'm never not being a help, you got to let me know. If you let me know in a loving way, I'll modify. Uh, you know, I'm, just, I'm doing my best. And if it's not helpful, as long as you're kind to me, I'll modify my approach. Okay? Awesome. Good stuff. If I missed any questions, 
We're about to go to the noon class, and that's where we do a lot of Q&A, okay? Now, where we really learn the program, if you are a free community member, you learn it by coming to these live classes, and you watch your little daily lessons, and it'll start building. The knowledge base will build, and you access your website. You get a journal in there, all that stuff, you get all that. If, if you are uh, a lifetime member or a partner, you want to always start with what videos, everyone? Thank you, Janice. I miss seeing your pretty face in Cartersville. Thank you, Debbie. That's right, Amy. We want to start with Kim Danke's Fast Track classes. We want to go through Fast Track. She's a, a school teacher, a former school teacher principal, very organized. Her and Sasha laid out the fast track lap system to help folks get through fast track, earn the fast track badge. And on the back end of the website for privacy reasons, we can't show you unless we blur out everybody's name. But this is a fact, y'all. We've got three kind of people, people that never log in. I don't know. I don't know. I heard from somebody over the weekend that never even paid for the program and they've lost over a hundred pounds uh, with a friend helping them. And they said, do I need to pay? I feel guilty. And I said, did you use our website? And they said, no. And I said, why would you pay? You didn't use the website. It's friends helping friends. They helped you. Great. Proud for you. Don't worry about it. Just enjoy your new life. Right. But I, I don't have any data on that person. Then you have the person that logs in and they try to do things their own way. They do not come to live class and they do not journal and they do not earn their fast track badge. Then you have the person that logs in. They use the website like the other person, but they also journal. They've earned their fast track badge and they attend live classes at least twice a month. They lose almost three times more weight in the same period of time as do people that don't do those three things. So is it worth doing those three things? Yes, yes. Real quick, I appreciate the uh, question. How do you become a partner? What does that give me? We always try to give more than we get. It's a struggle every day to keep our program afloat. That shouldn't scare you because the only thing that's in jeopardy on a day-to-day -day basis is uh, we need our team. Uh, I will be doing this, but as you've seen, uh, there are limits to the number of people that I can help myself, right? And it would the program would never be the same without this awesome team. So we need our team. And when I say struggle, I don't mean I'm quitting on you. No matter what happens, as long as I have my right mind, this is my passion. I'm not going anywhere. But you need more than me coming on here yelping at you. You need a great website that's changing and, and, and doing adding stuff all the time. That's what Kim Shaboloth working behind the scene. It takes a lot of us to pull this off. So by becoming a partner, uh, if you become a monthly partner at $5 or more, uh, you are designated as a partner and you're helping us save lives. We look at you as a real partner and we're about to release some amazing features to say thanks to our partners. And uh, you won't be disappointed, but we need all the help we can get even before we launch. When we transition to a ministry, uh, it, probably most would say was premature, but I felt the Holy Ghost give me the unction to do it and to not do it would have been sin. Uh, so I put myself, my back against the wall and the team's back against the wall. So if you trust me, you got some great new features coming to say thank you to our partners who's going to make this uh, a reality for people all over the country. So, so thank you. Yes, Joni, thank you. www.helpshaboloth.com. www.helpshaboloth.com. We, we don't ask people to help us that aren't lifetime members, though. If you're not a lifetime member, you're, you're our special guest here. I look at partners like our church members. You follow me? So uh, we need your help. Uh, so if you haven't become a lifetime member, it's only $49 to get all access to everything. 49 bucks, lifetime, pay once, never pay again. We give you everything you give us, we try to give you a hundredfold back. And, we, and I mean that, we do. So thank you, thank you, thank you. I have got to go to the next class. I love y'all, hate to split quick, but I'm three minutes behind. Love you. 
see some of you at the next one.